Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio, and in part five of our mini game jam, I am setting up the launch button to have a countdown sequence. That way it starts, waits for five seconds, then you begin to click on the button. So it gives you a little bit of time to prepare. Then I'm also setting up the launch time based off the number of clicks. So the more you click, the longer flight time. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so now I'm back. Got something to drink and now I need to figure out what to do next. So I think what I need to do is figure out like how many clicks and then kind of maybe represent that with time. So change the clicks into a time amount. And then these animations, both the height and the time to wait. So let me just do this real quick. Let me see how many clicks I can get as fast as I possibly can. So, and I think I need to also do a short wait and an indicator to let the user know that they'll be able to click on this. So maybe I'll do a, like a little countdown. Let's do that first. I think I'm gonna do a countdown. It's like five, four, three, two, one, and have the the button kind of not clickable and fade it out. And then when it's clickable, then it is completely uh, opaque. And then you'll be able to click on it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna add another in the UI. I'm not going to have this be part of the button, but I'm going to kind of show it in the button. So I want to do an animation of some text. So I'm going to add a new UI, Text Mesh Pro game object, and we'll have this be count down. And let's just move this into place here. Let's center that. Let's bold it. Make it just a touch smaller. Let's go to 28. And it's only going to be one character. And let's we'll center it a little bit. And okay, so we need to animate this. So let's go ahead and just start out with five. Oops, five. Yeah. And then we're going to do a countdown animation. So let's do this. So we're going to add an animation to this countdown text. So let's go animation, create a new animation. And in my SpaceX folder, count down. And then we'll do, let's do a 12 frames a second. And then all I need to do is just every second change that text. So let's go ahead and record. Okay, let's do this. We're gonna add a new game object. And we'll call this count down text. Have that be five. And I'll just duplicate it. Four, and then we'll change the text on that too. Okay, so here we'll add an animation. So let's get rid of this countdown animation. And here we don't need the animator. Let's remove that component. So here we want to add an animation to this countdown timer. So we'll go ahead and have all these off. And then to count down, this is what we want to add animation to. So we'll go ahead and create an animation. We'll call this be count down. Yeah. And then here we'll go ahead and change 12 frames a second. Actually, I can just do this uh, one frame a second because I'm going to just change one of these every second. So here, let's go ahead and record. I want to turn five on. And then at one second, we're going to turn five off and four on. Ah, oh, dang, those all have animators on. I got to remove those animators. Fortunately, you can't have an animation within an animation or an animator within an animator. 
back to record. So here we want to turn, let's see, five is on, then four. Then here we want to turn four off and turn three on. Then here we want to turn three off and two on. Here we want to turn two off and then one on. Five, four, oops, make sure four is off here. Okay, five, four, Five, four, three, two, one. And at the last frame, we'll turn that one off. Boom. Okay, and then we don't want to loop this animation, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. So loop, countdown text, countdown, no looping, please. Cool, okay, so that works. Now we can go ahead and just turn five on here. Doesn't really matter because the animation is gonna control that for us, but we'll go ahead and just start with that. Okay, so let's go back to our game manager here. Okay, so what is, what is it we wanna do? We want to start off with the button being faded. So let's add another state in here. And I'm gonna have a click counter be a global event as well. So let's go click counter. And then I'm gonna add a new state over here that's gonna be the start state. So we'll go ahead and have this set as start. Wait five. We'll go ahead and do that, wait five. And then the, we'll add a finished event. And once it's done waiting for five seconds, then it'll go to counter. And then we'll be able to click count. Okay, so here we want the button, fuel button, to have, let's go back to our, uh, let's lock this. We'll have our fuel button be kind of faded out. So let's go ahead and fade that out real quick. So our fuel button and the timer. Let's go fuel button, change the opacity here. Yeah, that works. And we'll do the same thing with the timer. That'd be transparent as well. Wait for five seconds. Then we'll turn those back to 100%. So what we want to do is our timer. Add that in. We're going to go to image. Let's see. Uh, set color. And I want that to be white and 100% opaque. Start that at the very beginning. We'll do the same thing with our button. Button UI. Let's see. Image UI set graphics set color. And what is the color that we want for our button? It's this orange. Let's copy that. Okay, we want to set our fuel button color here. Be back to 100%. Okay, so we want that to be at the beginning as well. So let's test that real quick. So here we're gonna start out waiting for five seconds with our fuel button out. It's gonna be animating five, four, three, two, one. 
then it'll go to our click counter that we're going to turn up that button back to be uh, completely opaque and then that's when we're going to be doing our click okay so let's give this a test five whoop. okay so here we need to in our timer I'm not doing the, the timed event here my timer is automatically going down so um, and also need to add a new state here. So let's go add state. I'll wait five. Have this be the start state. Add a finish transition. Add a wait in here for five seconds. Finished. That's going to go then into our timer, which is going to then make our line UI line go down okay five four three two one boom now I can click yeah so I got the 31 there We're launching, 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 going up higher, higher, higher. Then we're going to flip and then start coming back down. Go into our landing configuration, flip back, hopefully. Yeah, nailed it. Cool. All right. Okay, so I have that working and I've got just under an hour left. So what do I wanna to try to do next? Um, so I need to get the clicking and figure out a time amount based off the clicking. So I think if I do 30 clicks, let's have that represented by time. So if it was 30 seconds, that would probably be a last a little bit long. So let's go 30. So we'll just, however many clicks we have, we'll divide that by two and then that's what we'll have be our time, I think. Okay, so how do I wanna do that? I think I'm gonna, uh, we've got our click count here. I'll add a new FSM that's just gonna be handling the math for this part. So we'll go time let's go counter time maybe uh, let's go launch time maybe so we'll call this FSM launch time yeah I think that works okay so here what is it we want to do well we want to take the global variable so we've got a global variable of uh, SpaceX count. That's an int type value. And I think I want to take that in that, that number and divide it by two. And then I'm going to save that as a new global variable of time. Uh, okay. So we'll do some math here. Int oh, I can do a float divide. Let's see, int, 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 int math. Int operator. We'll do an int operator of take our global of SpaceX count. We're going to divide that by two. And then we're going to store the result as another global. Let's go ahead and create a new global over here of another int. Another int. It goes launch, launch time, I guess. Launch time. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to divide that by two and save it as launch time. 
Okay. And we are going to, let's go ahead and just do this every frame. All right, no, we're not going to do this every frame. We only want to do this once. So we need to call this at a certain period of time when it's going to do this. So once they're done clicking, then we need to call launch time math. So let's do, add a new event, launch time. And then here we'll, we'll add a new global transition of launch time. This is where we're going to do the math. And then the start state, we're just not going to do anything with. So let's go ahead and just move this over to this other state. Yeah, so here we're not doing anything. Here we're doing our, let's change this to idle. And then here's our launch time. Okay, so this is just gonna do the math for us. So we need to take the, we need to call this when we are done with the clicking. Okay, so let's go back to our, Oops, I added that to my fuel button. Holy cow. No, we don't want that. So let's copy these. Let's get rid of this Playmaker FSM. Now let's just copy component. And let's just remove component. And let's go back and add that to the here. So let's go and paste component as new. And then here I should have my launch time. Yeah, cool. Okay, so that works. So I need to call launch time uh, event when we then start our launch. So count, click count. So once we hit here, that's when I need to do that math. So let's just, we can do a um, send event by name. Send event by name. And Game objects FSM, the owner, and the FSM is launch time and the. Uh, nope, it's not, we don't want to do a variable. We want to send event of. And let's go ahead and just store this real quick um, so that we can, or show this on our screen so we know what's happening. Let's add a new little UI piece here. And we can always get rid of this later. Do a text mesh pro. Call this launch time. Move that up here. And we'll center that. And just add another UI text mesh pro. This one's going to be our click count time. I'll go ahead and bold this. Again, I'm not gonna leave this on screen, I think. Or I could represent it uh, as some kind of a meter, maybe. But for now, I'll just leave it as text. And uh, I, I need to do the same thing. So I need to change this our global int value into a piece of text, so a string, and then I'm, I don't want to set that text up there with that string. Okay, so let's do that over in our launch time. So here in the idle, we can go ahead and have that happen here. So we're going to do a int string, convert into string. So we want to convert the launch time into a new variable. We'll just call this launch time text. Dang it, I misspelled that. Oh well. Launch time text. And we can have that be every frame. And then we need to all update that text as well. So I'm going to take the text here. We'll go ahead and name it. Okay, so we're going to take that text, we're going to update it. So our text mesh pro, set property, what property? We want to update the text string. So that's the text that's actually in the box. 
with the launch time text. We're going to update that every frame. Okay. So hopefully this should be a division of two of whatever that is. And that didn't work. So what? let's pause real quick. See what's happening with our global variable launch time. So 33 did divide it by two, which you know 16 was the rounded number. And here we need to update that number in our launch time versus in the idle. So let's we can go ahead and set the property there, and then we also need to set it here. And then we also need to set this at zero right from the very beginning, which is over in our click count. So here, string to text. We'll add those to here as well. So we're gonna, this is just setting it to zero, and this is just the update. Okay. Hopefully this should work. So it should be zero, zero, five, four, three, two, one. Click, 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 click. How much fuel can I give it? Oh, we didn't update the number. Okay, what, what's going on here? So let's go back to our click, our launch time. Um, I am not calling this, I think, maybe. Mm, so why is that number not getting updated? Okay, so I want to update my launch time text property with the launch time text. Here I'm taking my space count, dividing by two, and I'm storing the result as launch time, which is the global variable. So that's what I need to update my text with. My global launch time. Just need to copy this here. So I'm converting the string to text. and updating it. Hopefully. Yeah, so that works. And I want to change this to be some kind of a meter, I think. Hopefully this will rotate. Cut off. Falling back to Earth. I do need to add a particle effect in there so that it does seem like it's falling because it doesn't really give me that effect right now. And then we land. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so this all part all works. Um, I do need to go back and in my click count. So when I'm going through all of this and I'm changing both the height so how long that animation lasts and how long, so how long it's moving up and then how long it's moving down. I need to update the animation, the length of the animation. So this time right here, based off that click time, okay? So we're storing that as a global variable called launch time. And so that's what I'm gonna update that number with. So we're gonna update this with a global variable Dang, and that's a float, and I need to convert a float to an int, or an int to a float. Okay, so let's let's do that back over here. So we need to take the int. Convert int to a float. 
because time is a float. If you want to take launch time, change this into a float variable, and we're going to add this as a new uh, new global. So we'll go a new float of launch anim time. Okay, so we're going to change launch time the the string. I mean. We're going to take launch time, the int, and change it into a float value. Yep, okay, so then we can go back and in our click count here and here, we're going to take that, that global variable of our launch anim time and then update time based off that. So here we'll go global launch time animation, animation time, we'll do the same thing here. So however long we click, or however much we click, that animation is either going to be longer or shorter based off of how, how many we click. So launch animation time, so they're both going to be the same. Okay, so, so I want to click just a few, so that animation should be very short. Five, four, three, two, one. So that should be seven seconds. So here's seven, yep. So we're launching, rotating. So from, that should last seven seconds, 1,000, or 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007. Then we should rotate back. I'm not exactly sure that worked or not. Let's we'll see. I have to do that again. Always test, test, test. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. 15 seconds, it'll be seven seconds. Okay, so here, five, oh, dang, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, so that worked. We're flipping, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, then we're flipping back. Uh, we aren't flipping back. So here, oh, I'm waiting 10 seconds at the end. So we can get rid of that 10 second and have this be finished. So once we're done with this animation, then we're just moving on. So let's try that again. See, this is a little jam. I'm just trying to figure it out as I go, so. Let's do 14, so that's seven seconds. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007. Here we're going into following, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, then we should transition back. And we're doing our landing. Heck yeah, that works. Hey, in part six coming up, we have all that information for our flights time, how long that's going to last. I'm gonna be setting up a launch meter so that we can visually see how long that's going to last. And then I'm wrapping up that three hour mini game jam. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next video is available. Until next time.